Let's get ahead of it now. The Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer is with us. He's the founder and managing partner as well. David Bonson here. He's the author of DividendCafe.com and author of his new book, Full-Time Work and the Meaning of Life. David, great to have you. Thanks very much for being here. How do you want to allocate capital here as we watch an economy slowing? Well, we're big believers that dividend growth equity is a better way to allocate capital regardless of the season, but particularly when you're dealing with the vulnerabilities we're dealing with now. Not only is there economic questions, but an ongoing monetary instability, fiscal irresponsibility, geopolitical tension. But Maria, the biggest issue to me is just valuations in the index. It's become so dependent. I think they're soon going to be calling the Magnificent Seven, the Magnificent Two or Three. Uh, a few of those names are falling off. And yet there's a couple that are just continuing to move higher. That can't carry the whole index. We have a historical precedent for this. And yet we really believe in consumer staples and energy and financials. There's certain dividend growing names that are really well valued and, and reasonable. And of course, you're getting that growing cash flow as you go. So are you saying you would sell into any rallies for the Magnificent Seven right now? If I owned them, I would sell them, yep. but I wouldn't wait for a rally. I would be selling it yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But we don't own those names. And the reason is that we're permanently kind of attached to valuations that we can be comfortable with. It's a risk mitigation strategy. Some of those names have done incredibly well, obviously. Some of them you know, are still not back to where they were in late 2021. So you're looking at kind of a, a choppy market that I think is going to stay range bound for a long time. Big up years like last year, big yep. down years like the year before, I think you might wake up three, four, five years with a very, very modest return with the index with MAG7. What we, and that's just the historical precedent yeah. of when you buy things at 50 times earnings. Sure. Mark, jump in real quick. <clears throat> David, I love your take on uh, dividend paying stocks. I think there's a tremendous opportunity there because when I look at the performance of the dividend aristocrats over the last year, it's up like 1.4% versus the S&P up around 20.4%. However, we were, we were going through a period with a very high risk-free rate. It seems that rates are going to be coming down. I would think that's going to be a positive for dividend paying stocks over the course of the next year or two. What do you say about that? Well, I think that dividend growing stocks get an even bigger advantage. And that was sort of our story post financial crisis is even though you were going through that decade of FANG that did so well, we did extremely well with dividend growth. And I think it was the fact that the delta between a current yield and where the 10 year was, right. not to mention, Mark, the S&P's yield. The S&P is only yielding one and a half, 1.3 percent. And it's used to yielding over the last hundred years, four or five percent. So we're trying to get about half of the return from income because we think that that doesn't go negative, whereas prices obviously can go up and down. I agree, though. The risk-free rate matters and also just the fundamentals of a company. Yeah. Companies that manage themselves to consistent cash flow are, are better run. I wonder what you feel about the macro story as we are waiting uh, fourth quarter earnings as well as economic data this morning. We've got retail sales coming at any moment here. Mm -hmm. David Ponson, your thoughts, your reaction to these numbers? Well, unfortunately, we couldn't care less ever about the retail number, consumer, consumer confidence, because we already know something, Maria, that everyone ought to know permanently about the American consumer. The only time they stop spending is when they run out of money and run out of credit. That's it. And you saw the lumpiness of the numbers, 5.6 in December, down a little January. Uh, when you are spending less at gas stations, convenience stores, that makes the numbers very lumpy. There is so much noise month over month in this data. We look at trailing quarterly numbers, and the American consumer just loves to spend. It's ingrained in the culture. All I care about for economic growth is production.